the FNL Network talk show. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the FNL talk show. I am joined in the library with Bettina Sky. I also have Diana and the incomparable David, who I haven't even met yet. So, hi, guys. How's everybody doing? How you doing? Good. Good. I'm doing well. How did I miss this library memo? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, me too. it's fundamental. <laughs> yeah, you know. Emphasis on mental. Yes, I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. David, you know we should all be in the library. It's not that hard right? to do. I look like I'm in space right now. <laughs> <laughs> it would be more unifying if we were all in the library. Yes, it would. I like that background. We'll take it. I love it. We're together, me and Sean are in the same room. Of course, <laughs> always, always, if not physically, in spirit. <laughs> so, so I know Bettina is in Warwick, New York. I'm in the city. Diana, you're in the Los Angeles region, correct? Mm -hmm. What's you, David? I'm in the Los Angeles region, too. Okay, cool. Yeah. The reason I was going for that one, I saw because I'm going to be in LA next week for work, um, that, you know, temperatures will be around 60, 70 next, you know, week in LA. But here in New York City, it's probably around high 40s, 50s. It got colder, maybe colder where Bettina is. So, you know, to me, it's kind of like cuddle season, TV season. And I'm just putting it out there. Has anybody been streaming or watching anything new recently, movie-wise, TV show-wise, that you find kind of interesting for maybe our viewers will want to watch it too? What about you, David? And I'll start with you. Well, I've been busy as heck for the last couple months with, with uh, girls flag football out here. But uh, since I got done, I started watching the uh, Hell on Wheels. Somebody had told me about it. And I love history. I'm a history guy. So, you know, I don't I don't like watching history that's fake, you know, or history that's completely skewed. And by watch, I started watching it and I really like it. It's a good show, you know. And so I'm in the first season right now waiting to see what happens with it. And uh, so far, I like it a lot. What is it about? Hell on Wheels? Is it about so, wheels, the devil? <laughs> I mean, I need to know. It's got everything. No, it's talking about the railroads, um, oh. when the railroads were being built back in the Old West. And uh, they got actual characters, kind of like a Titanic setup where, you know, they have the actual history, the actual characters in it, but then they have some some fake characters that they put in there. And uh, and it's it's just been great. It, it gets a hold of everything. It, it taps into every aspect of history. It taps into you know, how things were being done on the, on the fronts. Um, it also taps into the first time that, uh, uh, I guess our government started buying stocks and they were doing, I guess you can call it inside trading for this day and age, but, uh, they were buying stocks and it, uh, there's a lot of corruption and, you know, I don't know too much about it, but I've heard about it before. So I thought it'd be interesting to get involved in it and I'm loving it. So. Awesome. What about you, Bettina? Is there a show you're loving on? Um, I started watching the comedy specials of Taylor Tomlinson. She's going to be the new uh, comedy host after uh, Colbert on CBS, like late night comedy host. So I got interested to watch her and she's very, very funny. She's very clever. She's very attractive. She's very young. She, I don't even think she's 30 yet. And there she is. She got the, to be the host. So it's the first like female late, late night talk show host and i watched her two netflix specials and they're fantastic so i definitely recommend checking that out and uh i recently saw a movie on netflix called you people which i thought was great it's julia louis dreyfus and although i'm never fond of non-jewish people playing jewish roles it's like a kind of a thing they never put a jewish woman in an actual Jewish woman for a Jewish role, but Julia Louis Dreyfus really pulled off this role, and it's very well done and funny. Good, I love her. I think she's great. She's and what so are you saying? Um, I'm I've been big into documentaries. Um, and the Vice Channel has like really good series. It's like they have Dark Side of Comedy, which is all bios about comedians and like how things can go wrong in comedy. So this season they had Robin Williams, Joan Rivers, um, uh, Carlos Mencia. And then there's Dark Side of the Ring, which like I'm actually a big wrestling fan. And these are stories about famous things that have gone wrong in wrestling, whether it's deaths or like shows that didn't end up the way they expected. And like pay-per-views gone completely wrong, feuds and all that. There was an episode 
which I had no idea this even happened. And you would think this would have happened in the 80s, but it happened in the 2000s. It was called the plane ride from hell. And they got grounded on the way back from Europe, but they went through three bar carts in that time. So like by the time they were taken off, everyone was trashed. And allegedly there was like sexual assault happening and stuff like that. So they interviewed one of the flight attendants and it's these big name wrestlers that like allegedly did all this. So that's just fascinating to me. Like how this, this happened in like 2006. Like it's crazy. Um, and then they have Dark Side in the 90s and the 2000s, um, which I appreciate because I was born in the 90s and then I grew up in the 2000s. So um, they were focusing on like TRL, John and Kate plus eight and like, you know, the internet, all that stuff that, you know, we didn't know about in the 2000s and it kind of just became this Pandora's box situation. I love it. I mean, yeah. so many great topics. You know, like going from inside trading to like Bettina and the comedian. But it made me think when you mentioned too, like Joan Rivers, she had one of the first late night talk shows. And that's yeah. why she talked to Johnny Carson anymore. But she's like, can we talk? And he wouldn't talk to her because he was jealous. Yeah. So she was supposed to take his empire and he would always sub for her. So actually she was the originator before this new young lady. You mentioned Bettina. I don't know her yet, but I guess I will, you know, and start to get to know her. And funny enough, you know, I always thought like if you're, I think you said, was it on a train or a plane where the wrestlers drank too much? Diana? It was a plane. A plane. Okay, so I always thought that flight attendants would not want drunk passengers. And one of my personal side tricks, because I wrote a book called Luxury Seals and Deals, is to be a drunk passenger upgraded in first class, because I <laughs> enjoy it. And so I'm always like, does this annoy the flight attendant? So anyhow, I became friends with people who are flight attendants and pilots, and they typically prefer drunk consumers in first class because you kind of pass out and you don't bother them as much. So they typically, you know, most won't be rowdy. Most won't be sexually assaulting. That's where I thought it would actually go. Typically, maybe if you're a wrestler, it's a little bit different, but typically flight attendants, or at least the ones I know, prefer the drunks. Just as it was also a private plane. So like, I feel like that definitely lended to more disaster. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, because there's less accountability because somebody rented it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I asked a question. So I know Diana likes horror movies, and I like horror movies. And I saw two that are kind of dumb but fun, I thought, um, because I'd never heard of it. Actually, three. Um, but two are, like, one's a sequel. I think the first one's just called Becky, about a girl whose family's terrorized and she kills them all. And then there's Wrath of Becky, because clearly Becky can't get a break. Uh, but I really liked it. And then Becky winds up working for the CIA or FBI afterwards. Totally not true, but totally like fluff and fun. And then there was one, Fear of the Night. Again, I don't know, I guess I like seeing women terrorized and then killing the men. And that was the same plot, basically. They all go to like a summer home and then they get terrorized and then they get revenge. On different topics, I've enjoyed for whoever wants to check it out red white and royal blue it was like a rom-com and i always hate rom-coms um but it was a gay one about a guy marrying a prince maybe i want to marry a prince maybe that's what was missing in my rom-coms but i really enjoyed it i found it very sweet and nice and i don't know I, and then um Uma Thurman's in it with a very bad Texas accent. So she's worth watching just for her very bad Texas portrayal, I would say. Um, and then the last thing I just started watching is Matt Bomer in a TV show taking place during McCarthyism called Fellow Travelers. And I think it's excellent because it covers the history, like you like David, about McCarthy and Roy Cohen and actual cases. Um, the I Ethel and what was the husband's name? Do you know um, Bettina Eisenberg, was it? Who got executed? Rosen, Rosenberg. Rosenberg, Rosenberg. So anyhow, they're mentioned, there's real history in this. I'm assuming it's not a real tale. It's about a senator and then who he loves and then all this complications. But anyhow, it's very interesting. Three episodes down so far. I don't know how many to go, but I've been in it for whatever it's worth. So... Anyhow, there's some like little tips, I guess, for anybody listening who wants to watch something other than the FNL talk show. I don't know why you would, you know, and we're so damn fascinating. But if you do, we just gave some good ideas. You know, now talking about ideas and um, the Rosenbergs and so forth. I mean, you know, the famous phrase is if you don't and you like history, as you said, David, don't learn from history. You repeat it. 
So what's up? Do you think we're learning? Why is there an increase now? You know, even aside, it was happening before the whole Israel-Gaza situation and anti-Semitism and so forth. Um, even too, I mean, it, it really seems like there was a lot of backlash after Obama with then Trump as far as like racial divisions again and Black Lives Matters coming to the forefront after it seemed like to me we had moved forward with Obama being president at the time. What are your thoughts? Do you think, you know, do people ever really learn? Do our natures ever really change? What does it take to make that happen? Anybody like to go first? Well, uh, I can go first if you don't care. Sure, of course. <laughs> so being that I teach high school, oh, um, cool. we do not, we don't tend to teach, you know, history the way it should have been taught. We don't seem to... Uh, keep up with with what's going on in the world at the times. And what I found, one of the biggest things that I found is that um, if you even watch, like I'm watching right now, or actually I'm listening to another podcast um, about history of Alexander, um, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jackson, Andrew Jackson. And, you know, listening to their history, listening to them going and watching theater and the theater was talking about when they were taking the Cherokees out of the lands and everything. Um, people wanted to go see this mate, this famous actor and they're excited about the show. And then they get in there and because they started tapping into politics on the, on the show um, and with the movement of the, the Cherokees out of their lands into the reservations, um, people started throwing things at it. They were getting angry and it sounds almost identical to what's going on today. So even though people don't seem to want to learn from history, it seems to recycle itself in so many different fashions. And just the other day, I think actually it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was, uh, I, I do these things called Q and a in my classes where I just let the kids ask me any question they want, as long as I'm not going to go to jail for it, you know, and, and I, <laughs> I do the best I can to answer the questions and, and they find out an awful lot of truth about me and, you know, and they, they find throughout the years, you know, I didn't become a teacher so that I can teach, you know, everything other than just anatomy and physiology and, 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 and whatnot, you know, I teach them what not to do. And uh, so they asked me questions and, and uh, somebody had asked me what I thought, you know, um, and the, I think the exact question was what, you know, how do you feel about the Palestinians attacking the, uh, the, the, the um, Israel? And because I didn't know enough about that, I said, I don't know enough about what's going on. It's a very complicated situation. That thing's been going on for thousands of years. Um, I said, but uh, from what I know, the Palestinians, and this is what I said, I said, the Palestinians are, are, are being a bunch of jerks right now. And I just left it at that, you know, and I said, okay, I'm going to move on from that because I, I can't dive into that. I don't really know the understandings of it. And um, what ended up happening was the next day, one of my students, he said, hey, coach, every time they, you said, if we ever feel offended or we get upset, we can come talk to you. And I said, oh, yeah, please do come talk to me. And uh, he said, well, I have a problem because I'm Palestinian and what you said. And it kind of threw me back. I said, uh oh. OK. Um, and he told me his part. And he goes, you know, I, ha I personally know about 50 different um, people that are civilians over there and that have died, you know, and um, because of the attacks. I backed up for a second. And I was like, well, if it would have flipped the other way around, I would have said the same thing. But then I realized what I was doing is being ignorant on the history of it. And I shouldn't be speaking out on it. But it was almost to the effect of if, say, here in America, we had uh, maybe the KKK did something really stupid against another race or something. And then the rest of the world says all, all of America is just as bad because of that. You know, and I looked back and I said, oh, OK, so it's a certain group of individuals. So, I, you know, I told them the next day, I said, hey, I apologize for coming at you like that i i didn't know enough and in fact i really still don't know enough about it my dad uh, asked my brother teaches history and i mean he can go on and on and on and on and uh he started to tap into the history of what was going on in the middle east and everything and it went so far back that even i started to lose interest i'm like whoa that's that's complicated and so i think what's happening over there is very complicated we unless we're in it, unless you understand what's going on about it, it's very difficult to, to deal with. Um, you know, I went through desert storm, you know, and I was just a kid myself. So, you know, I try to stay out of that, but you're, I think you're 100% right when it comes down to the fact that it doesn't feel as if as a nation in itself, that we are moving forward. I feel like we just keep spinning our wheels. And even though it comes at a different angle, it still is, um, convoluted. You know, and it, it, I guess the best analogy I can point out is, you know, back, you know, I remember it seems like every 30 years, 
styles change, you know, and in the eighties, you know, I grew up in the eighties and I'm dating myself now, but, <laughs> uh, growing up in the eighties, a lot of our styles were like, you know, 50 styles, you know, um, greasers and everything, but with a little bit of a different twist to it, you know, and I started to realize now kids are running around and in the nineties, kids were running around with bell bottoms again, you know, and that, that style started to come back, you know? And so it seems like as a country, as a whole, um, we, we don't seem to move forward and we just keep fighting each other and, and arguing about ridiculous stuff. And I don't think people know enough about history to change it. And I think it starts in the high schools. I think it starts at home. I think that uh, we're just not teaching people the actual truth of what's going on. So everybody just, you know, lets it just move over, move over, you know? So, you know, I just got done working the wall this week for, uh, they, they have a, uh, uh, a Vietnam uh, Memorial wall we have up here. And um, I volunteer every year, you know, helping out with the Vietnam vets that are out there because they're getting old now and they're asking us to carry on the torch. And we're starting to find that kids nowadays um, are afraid to go in the military. They're afraid to do anything in the military. And, you know, it's like, I, I hear parents tell me, well, I don't want my baby getting shot. I don't want him. I'm like, you know, it, it, that's not what it's about. When I was a kid, I didn't want to get shot. You know, but if my parents told me, you know, what was going on, I know my grandpa was World War II Korean vet. I know that my my uh, uncles were all in the military, you know, and, and for me, I was like, you know, that's what you do. You, you go in and, and you're honorable to your family, your country and, and your friends. And I just don't seem to think that we're teaching kids at a young age anymore what what should be happening, you know, and everybody has a right to their opinions, you know, but at the same time, we still have to learn from what we're doing wrong. You know, and I'm kind of went off on a tangent there, but. <laughs> You know, that it, it, it's all over the place. So I don't know if we're really growing and you're right. I think 100% um, there came a point where it felt like, okay, that stuff's behind us. You know, being an athlete my whole life, I dealt with, you know, I don't like to call it reverse racism, but for me, being the white guy, they can jump, they can, they can run, they can, you know, do everything. I've always dealt with it. It wasn't an issue for me, but other people in different regions have dealt with a lot of things. So, you know, I just think we're spinning our wheels. Wow, that was a lot. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for probably sharing. confused everybody. <laughs> no, 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 no. I appreciate it. You know, um, also one thing I don't know if it's being taught or what have you, but I do think, and it is kind of a general mindset of many liberal folks, and I put myself on that side as well, to kind of blame the white oppressor. You know, in general, and yeah. I. You know, what I heard is that some of the backlash now with Israel, because the Palestinians had to live behind a wall, they didn't have necessarily the same opportunities, but then they committed, you know, a recent act to try to kill as many people as they could, but it wasn't the Palestinians, it was a subgroup of Hamas. Exactly. So now I think people are confusing all these issues, and also even the fact that, yes, Israel did not exist, and then they did, but that was the UN Accord, and every country saying that they deserve the land, and they should have a place that started all of this and then you know the issues have continued you know throughout many years and of course there's not easy solutions or what have you and just you know because somebody does something horrible how much retaliation in which way i mean you know again after we were attacked we went after the wrong country after 9 11 so yeah. i don't you know there's a lot of things that you know can be done better from everybody's end i think i mean you know i would love you know if just generally you know we became kinder nicer and more accepting of people i mean i didn't even realize i mean i heard in some survey that the population of the world is only about one two percent jewish so to be such a target and such a small population is just extra shocking you know to me yeah. um and anyhow, that's just like my two cents. Um, would you like to say anything about it, Diana or Bettina, who would like to go next? It's hard to follow that up. Um, I think it was really well said. Um, I would like to add that because of, I don't wanna get too far into it, but I feel like because of the leadership we had um, in before 2020, you know, Trump, I hate name dropping. I think people felt more comfortable being like blunt and instead of I don't even want to call it blunt because it was racist or like microaggressions and stuff people kind of lost that filter and they're like well if the guy at the top is doing it it's okay if I do it and you know nothing can happen to us like we already went through the civil rights movement like we're good you know it can't happen again but like our country is in much worse shape morally in my opinion than we were what when did he get elected in 2016 so like we we've gone back we've gone backwards and it just breaks my heart 
to see how many people are now more vocal with their hatred because of Trump. I would agree. But Tina, do you have anything to add about that particular topic? I mean, yeah, that's all true, Diana. Um, it's sad. I mean, I, I personally think the world is coming to like a tipping point. Like it could go one way the or the other in terms of, I think we could all end up just putting an end to humanity altogether. But we can get our shit together and really love each other and love our differences and heal the world. And I think this is kind of like a crucial moment, like which way is is the planet gonna go and um it's scary it's scary to watch it you know and i think we should just all do our part as much as we can to be compassionate be kind and kind of like spread that vibe out into the world as much as possible because this killing each other stuff is pretty horrendous and i i don't think that's what the creator really wanted us to be doing so of course. Um, and then I have a pseudo follow up to kind of what we're talking and it's a little political, but not necessarily. Well, it is. I mean, David, since you actually served and, you know, you have a family that serves, mm -hmm. how well, other than from the men in arms and women in arms and so forth, protecting our country, do you feel our democracy is guaranteed and protected or do you think it's something we could lose? Like after the insurrection of January 6th, you know, I, like the Philippines would have the Marcos before them. They actually had a pseudo democracy and uh, America was sponsoring them, even helped get Imelda out when the S hit the fan because she had enough money to pay her way out, just as in many other countries. So other countries have started off with good intentions and uh, somewhat of a democracy, maybe not as strong as ours, but then they've crumbled. Do you think, you know, that with your background in history and in service, that we have enough guardrails or not necessarily? Yeah, that's a loaded question. Um, well, I can tell you this. Right now, it feels as if we're losing it. You know, if you look at people talking on the internet, everybody thinks, oh, it's just the end of the times. Or, you know, what's going on? What are we, what are we going through? You know, nobody likes the Pope. Nobody like, or people like the Pope. Nobody likes Trump. People like Trump. Nobody likes America. People like, I mean, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Um, if you look back throughout time and history, in fact, like I was telling you, listening to that podcast the other day, um, you know, it was about 40 years before the Civil War even came into effect that, People were starting to think, oh, this is the end of democracy. We're, we're ruining it. We're not following the Constitution. Um, it always seems like we're just that close. I mean, I was too young in the 70s to understand what was going on. Um, and I, was, I wasn't even around in the 60s. But um, it seemed like if you look at the history, you know, the way people were talking back then, everybody feels like it's the end of times during their generation. Everybody feels like, oh, democracy is not going to come back. We're not going to get it together. Um, I think that there's been things that have done or have been done um, by both sides. You know, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I cannot stand the two party system half the time because I think what ends up happening is you have the elites on both sides that are arguing and they're forgetting about us. We're the people. OK, um, I have my views. I have my beliefs. I know what I'm about. You know, uh, I know where I come from, you know, uh, and I tell, you know, everybody that runs into me one way or another, I'm going to meet you know, my creator one day, and I have to be able to answer him. Were you good? Were you good to those type of people? Were you good to the people that did that? Did you follow my laws? Did you follow my rules? And, you know, I do the best I can to be where I'm at. Um, but I think as far as democracy goes and what's going on in our, our country right now, um, I think within the next year, we're going to see a lot of things get worse before it gets better. Um, but at the, but because of these extreme political parties, um, I, I do not, I really don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I can't even guess what's going to happen. But if I were to go off of what I've seen throughout history and all the different generations throughout time, it all seems to work itself out sooner or later. You know, I think, um, you know, uh, you guys are right. Like Diana said, that, that uh, in general, people have to understand that they've got to be good. You've got to just be a good person. Um, I, I'm totally shocked that I've, I've run into more high school age students in the last this last year They've never even heard of the Holocaust. And that's shocking to me. You know, it's absolutely shocking. And it, it, including kids that are super smart kids that want to learn, they want to understand when I say, hey, you know, if you, you know, somehow the, they're like, what's the Holocaust? You know, what, I mean, we're, we're not teaching our kids what humanity has done to each other. We're not teaching, you know, instead of trying to push for complete opposite sides, we need to come to a, an agreement in the middle and say, look, you know, your beliefs are like this, these beliefs are like that. How do we keep this country moving forward? Um, in the military, for me, um, I could have hated you 
you know, here in the States, you know, once you're on the other side of when you're not, you're not on this, you cross the pond or you're in another land, there's an enemy across the way that wants us both dead. Now we've got each other's backs. And it's really interesting how, um, when you're, when you feel alienated and isolated from your own country, your own uh, people, so to speak, um, how you come together and, and regardless of what your political beliefs are, you know, I mean, uh, to give you an example, I had a, uh, one of my best friends out in Nebraska, I used to be a lead singer for a country rock band. And, uh, he was a big six foot five black guy. And we absolutely loved singing together. When we went to small little towns that were, you know, <laughs> pretty, you know, back west it like they're they're you could tell they're racist you know and uh he used to joke around he goes i might be the token black guy because when he started singing everybody loved him but we had complete opposite political beliefs and what we understood was like hey you believe what you believe i believe what you believe uh, i mean i believe what i believe but in the end we got along and we knew how to work with each other and regardless of what you think uh, as long as i'm not forcing you to say i, I don't like you because of your beliefs i don't like you at all that's what we have a problem with. The minute somebody says something to us to the effect that uh, I don't like what you believe in, we put they people put up walls now. You know they're not even willing to listen, and that's a big part of 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 you know communication. And communication is not there. You know you even if you try to help talk to somebody and say, hey, this is what I think, everybody just starts attacking. So democracy, or you know, I think it's going to come back around. You know, I mean that's based on history, you know, that's what I've seen. Um, but we are always going to come across generations and probably 30 years from now, our kids and grandchildren are going to say the same thing. Um, it's the end times where, you know, what are we going to do? But it all seems to work itself out. So our forefathers were pretty smart people, I think. Well, we weren't nuked during the Cold War, so that I'll give you. <laughs> so that's right. good. Yay. Um, Speaking um, of that, I'm worried about that AI coming into effect. I heard the other day that the AI is going to have complete control of that and Man, that's a whole other issue right there. That that's that scares me, you know. Well, the people created it are trying to regulate it for that reason and not to give it too much power. And we don't know. I mean, it's a new technology. We're all gonna learn and hear about it together. I mean, for me, you know, I would say democracy is made up of the people. So, you know, there are guardrails if the people want the guardrails, but if the people disregard the guardrails and allow something to happen, then I think it's very fragile, you know, and yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, general population has more of control, like we the people. So I think, you know, an example would be, you know, with abortion, whether you agree or not, but, you know, the Supreme Court currently, you know, Brett Kavanaugh and all these people are like, we won't overturn Roe versus Wade. And then they did. But now the people who aren't happy about that are showing up for the state's to counter that. So that's definitely something that can happen. You know, people weren't very happy with like, let them eat cake with Marie Antoinette didn't end well for her. So, you know, people can make their voices heard, but if you do turn everything into a military zone or police state, you could officially end a democracy. Um, oh, yeah. Is a little scary to me because how do you really go against tanks? And we've militarized our police uh, in every city. Um, so that's already there. You know, it's just a matter, you know, then you can call in the National Guard and all these other things. So it's a little scary for me for those reasons. I mean, I think we went too far with the militarization of our local police forces and maybe the control we've given, you know, presidents and just one bodies of power without making sure all check and balances were there that we assumed it would be there in, you know, yeah. previous generations. Um, what do you think about this, uh, Bettina? Do you think we have enough guardrails in place? No, I think we're at a scary point. I I think that uh, this is very different than how it ever was before. I don't think we've ever gotten this close to like, uh oh, there might not be a democracy. You know, if we get Trump in as a president, he's gonna kind of do away with any kind of election moving forward. He's just gonna be like, I'm president forever. He's gonna be a dictator. Then he's gonna put his little criminal children, you know, as further, you know, people to run the country he's going to do away with all the criminal evidence against him and then that's the end of democracy so and this is the in my I, growing up in my whole life like i've never seen anything close to this like uh oh we may not have a democracy anymore and the countries all over the world are now keeping an eye on the United States, like the things I've been reading are like, this is the first time ever that the United States is on a list of like, they might not be a democracy anymore. Like they have a potential of heading towards a dictatorship. 
I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. I'm hoping we all kind of get out and vote and make sure that Trump does not get to be president. But no, I think the guardrails are shaking in their feet, shaking in the ground. They're not steady anymore. There's a lot of stupid people out there and they don't understand really what they're voting for. They're like voting against themselves. They don't understand like voting for Trump is is really ending the you know democracy as it's been. And what do you think, Diana? Are we good? Are we not? Are we maybe in between? I echo everything Bettina just said. Like, she pretty much took the words right out of my brain. It is scary. <laughs> um, it's also crazy that, you know, like you said, people don't know what they're voting for. And it's also crazy when we have evidence right in front of us that people don't want to look at it because they're afraid that their government is making it up or whatever. But then it's like, if you do believe that and you vote in that direction you're screwing yourself over as Bettina is saying it's like well then you're not making your government better like you're turning it into a dictatorship and it's you know like science is real facts are real in my humble opinion and I just think people need to be more diligent I'm all for thinking for yourself and believing what you want to believe in but I'm also for like protecting people and just being a good human, you know, there's like a line between all that. Like, I believe people can believe what they want, but when it's a danger to other people, like racism or, you know, like genocide and all that, like, no, like if you're that, if you're on that side, like, I don't, I don't want to be a part of your life. Um, but I just think it, like at the end of the day, it really just comes down to being a good person. I would concur. Being a good person is always a good thing. Yes. Uh, now, I'm kind of not even like devil's advocate, but like to give kind of equal time to possibly bring up, you know, another thought process. You know, Biden in the polls is in the toilet, you know, essentially. And recently, and, you know, I'm only going to you because of your military background, David, and I don't know if you saw it, but I read an article that, you know, for the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, or what have you, Biden seemed out of it. And that adds to the fodder of him not being, you know, eligible or capable or should run again, you know, what have you. I mean, I think personally, he just makes bad TV. And now the presidency is American Idol and that we need to have good communicators, preferably be younger, over qualifications, you know, for both the Democratic and even the Republican parties, if they want to win, the prettier, more articulate person is going to win. It's just where we are right now, or the person who's the most entertaining, you know, in the case of like, you know, I would say Trump, whether you like him or hate him, he steals all the headlines. He takes all the wind out of the room, regardless. And, you know, Biden, you know, seemed half dead from the beginning. Nice man. I'm not against him. I have no problem with his policies, but I don't think he should run. So I'm just going to say, did anybody hear about what just recently happened for Veterans Day with Biden? And do we think he should also, like the Republican Party, at least have primaries and have other people come to the forefront and let the people decide who would like to go first? I so what immediately comes to mind and I didn't know about what happened on Veterans Day but you know in times of like chaos we turn to comedy and SNL is so good at capturing the current climate and making you laugh and there was one sketch they did I believe it was before the writer's strike where they turned the election into a horror movie which you know I love oh, horror God. movies and it was like um it first started like, oh, Biden running was like scary because then Trump's going to win. But then you look at all the alternatives and it's like, OK, maybe we do want Biden to run. And I just think like another SNL reference, you know, John Mulaney, when he was hosting um, the election of 2020, he was like, yeah, we're having an elderly man contest. And I'm not discriminating against age, but it always is. It seems to be aside from Obama, it's like the rich white guys always end up in charge and like no offense to them they don't represent me like I'm a tiny little white girl from Staten Island like you don't represent me um how do I trust that like you're I mean you know not to get too carried away but it's like I have to you have to pick what best suits your beliefs and at the end of the day it still sometimes isn't enough but I agree with you we need to get fresh blood out there I don't think that's a bad idea but then you you run into the the situations where closed-minded people maybe they don't want a female running or they don't want 
someone of a different nationality running or they just they like the way things were going in the past so they just don't want any change or some people don't know what to do so they don't vote at all and and it's scary like it's just like what do we do you know <laughs> yeah many americans don't vote i think it should be you know compulsory or mandatory to vote i mean people mm -hmm. die for this right so it's just so crazy to me that you know people in the civil rights movement and suffrage movements and all these people who denied the right to vote you know put their lives forward people fought for our country for this right and then half of americans are like meh you know unless they really like you know, or ignited by the candidate or a personal choice or an issue like abortion or what have you, they do not even bother. Um, and then I, you know, support the idea, like David was saying, more than two parties. But it seems right now with the third party system, it just steals a vote when it's too close because, you know, most people go with team A or team B. So it doesn't seem mm -hmm. to work effectively as of today. Um, what say you, David? Do you think there should be more candidates in the pool from both ends or a third party? Oh, man. Uh, the way I look at it, I just wish we had somebody in there that can make my gas prices go down and my the economy go down. I just feel like because of the extreme fighting on both sides, you, you said it right there, a third party system is just not going to work, you know, because it's going to pull votes away from somebody. If there's a new candidate that comes out, I personally, um, and, and a lot of people probably got mad at me about it, but being a leader and myself, being a coach and a head coach for so many years and having kids of my own, I always felt that that Trump was not the guy to go out there and be the guy to represent me. Um, he said stupid crap all the time. You know, he it was it was like, oh, geez, man, you know, you do one thing good. And then the next thing you know, you say this. And, and it just it, for me, it was like watching some rich kid out there just picking on people. And that's the way I felt about it. Um, I didn't think that he even had a chance ever to come back into office again, just based on the fact that just too many people were like, yeah, that, that's enough. Um, and then we flipped to the other side and I almost feel like they just put him up there as, you know, and they're like, uh, telling Biden, Hey, you know, say this, but don't say this. And he forgets. And it, it's, it's embarrassing in all aspects to be able to have somebody to bring us together, um, I think with what's going on in the world right now, um, I don't think, I don't think people want that. They don't want to come together. And I think all four of us sitting here talking, we understand, Hey, we all, we all have our beliefs, but we still want to be together somewhere. We got to find a common ground. And for me, that's been my whole life. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my, my belief system is the absolute right for you guys. It, it might be right for me and what I believe in, but it's not my job to sit there and push my views on you. And if somebody asks me, I tell them, but I just feel like these two, two party systems are making it bad. I'm glad that you, that you said people are not voting. Nothing bugs me more than, you know, people not voting. I mean, being in the military and being around military um, and having a lot of friends that have died you know, um, fighting for that right. You know, I think everybody should vote. I think everybody should have a say. So I think everybody should be stepping up to the plate. Too many people sit back and expect the rich people to take care of it and the smart people, so to speak, take care of it. And then all the people that are complaining, they never got down and voted anyways. You know, I'm one to believe that if you didn't vote, shut your mouth. You have nothing to say, you know, you didn't vote, you know, and if I do vote, I can say, Hey, I voted, you know, and uh, you know, I didn't vote for that person or I voted for that person, you know, and then it's on you in your heart, whether or not it worked out. But I, I just think it's just too extreme on both sides, you know, and, you know, for the longest time I was an, I, I went independent because one, I didn't understand enough about politics when I was younger Two, being in the military, I had to do what I had to do no matter what, what I was told, um, regardless of what I believed in. And three, um, my dad was, an, it, it, you know, he was always been an extreme right you know, right wing person that, you know, and I'd, I'd be like, man, I'd be arguing with him about things, you know, and my mom would be in the middle and her and I would agree on things like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I don't like that. But hey, we need to do this or that. Um, so when it comes to the two different parties and people not voting, that's irritating to me, not to mention and on both sides, we keep hearing stories about, you know, fake votes here, fake votes there. Why can't we just figure out something where it's like, hey, we lost fair and square. It is what it is, you know. I grew up thinking that's the way it was. I didn't even know they can do this stuff with technology. I didn't even know they can have these mishaps. And then it takes, what, two, three years for them to go through all. I mean, how long does it take to really count votes? You know, and, and that's the problem. We don't know who to trust. 
you know, whether it's the right, the left, the middle, heck, who knows? And then the, you, you find somebody you really, really like, and you think, oh, that's a good person. That That's somebody who can bring us all together. And then all of a sudden you're told by everybody out there that, oh, you can't, you know, they have a, a hidden, you know, agenda underneath. You got to watch out for that. And then it makes us all back up and go, oh, man, you know, what are we voting for here? So it, I, I it's convoluted. It's, it's, it's sad. You know, it's, it makes me angry, you know? Um, and to be honest with you, I don't watch the media as much. You know, if I do, if I'm in the gym, I'll look at CNN on the right and I'll see Fox on the left and I'll go, huh, well, that story says this, this story says that. And I try to make an intelligent decision based on my own beliefs. And I'm like, huh, well, somebody's lying here, but where, where are we? What do we believe in? You know, I just think too many people are extreme and the extremists on both sides of the tables is making it difficult for us, you know, little people. Well, I, uh, that was a lot. And I agree with a lot of what you said. And, you know, the big problems, and you mentioned it kind of for Biden, is the economy and inflation. And I think all that's due to corporate greed who puts in all our politicians. And that's yeah. the issue. Because I don't understand, like, even when they were saying for a while in New York, eggs, six dollars a dozen or what have you like just like the price is going crazy that they can't regulate it well they clearly could i mean i don't think there's anything that they can't be you can't make more than a 300 percent profit on an essential of life you know why can't that go through congress but i think they're all paid not to do that you know unfortunately and it even made me like you know being somebody who kind of enjoys a debate or a rumble more or less like especially a verbal spar like why didn't they blame trump for the economy crashing with covid and that he mishandled it now granted nobody worldwide i don't think handled it great and i'm not like saying that that's officially my belief but if i wanted to go against someone it's a good stance to take um but then that means they then have to you know take responsibility for recovering it and regulate and nobody wants to i don't think do that because that's who's putting all their butts, you know, in office. I mean, and it is kind of funny and crazy that like, yes, during Reagan, the economy will soar, but then they wind up from all the tax cuts and, you know, taking from the government, destroying the economy. Then Clinton comes in and has a surplus after we're in like a national debt, you know, then Bush Jr. comes in and destroys the economy. Then Obama has to build it back up. Then Trump rides that economy. Then he destroys it with COVID. Now Biden's back in. So, I mean, it's like one of these things like, yeah, it always feels great during the Republican Republicans with the tax cuts. And then later we have the biggest debt and the Democrats like never blame the other side. I don't know why, um, but that's typically how it's been going since Reagan, at least. Um, now, as far as you, Bettina, what do you think? Is Biden the guy? Will inflation bring him down? Or should we just have options and primaries? <laughs> No government. <laughs> They're all being, you know, they're all being paid. Um, I mean, it just seems that Biden is the only option that I feel like I feel like we have to get not Trump, you know, and whatever it takes. I think that's just like a most important thing because the democracy is on the line. It's not we don't have time to like think about uh, these other options like independence. I mean, you know, there are some interesting independents, but I don't think now's the time. I think we're kind of like in an emergency here and we all just have to like vote to make sure Trump doesn't get elected. That's kind of how I see it. Uh, I don't, you know, and I, I know that Biden won previously. So I'm kind of hoping that it goes in the same direction because I don't see any other options other than this John, John Kennedy. Is that who's coming up? Yeah. yeah he's, the, he's the independent. Yeah. Do you guys know much about him or what do you think about that. Again, I think it comes down to when we have independence, uh, they're taken away from the vote and it's just making it, it's convoluted. And um, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, it, it's, it's extremists again. What, I mean, where do we go? You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's one side or the other. And if you're not in, you know, you're an ass, or if you are in, you know, Oh, good. You know, and, and, but heck, I don't know enough. I mean, I don't, I don't know if any of us know enough. I can't fix the economy. I don't think, I don't think all four of us together could fix the economy, you know, but it, that being said, you know, it's like, you know, I believe we can. We trust the people. Yeah. Right. We trust the, we're supposed to trust those people. And all we keep, we just keep people, they keep slinging mud all over the place. And I think personally, it divides the people in itself. We're dividing right down the line, you know, um, Kennedy and it, it, he look, I growing up, I thought 
President Kennedy and he was a great man until I started finding out the history, you know, what he was doing. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, our morals are out the door. Hell, our morals were out the door back in the 60s. You know, um, I, I mean, there's a difference between morals and values. And I think people value a lot more than they have morals. You know, morally for me, there's a lot of things that I'd be like, man, I can't do that. You know, I can't lie. I cannot cheat, you know. Um, and then I, like I said, I coach sports and, and I hear coaches all the time. Well, if, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You know, and I'm just like, you know, that's, that's the worst way to look at it, you know, and I think that politicians in itself, it doesn't matter what you do. Heck, my wife told me one time you should run for mayor. And I'm like, you're crazy. You know how much trouble I would get into and how much mud would be slung at me? Hell, I'd be finding girlfriends that I didn't even know I had, you know, and it's like, I don't know how I don't think there is a candidate out there that we can look at and all of us can say, hey, that's the person that needs to lead this country. Because once that guy steps up or that lady steps up, everybody's going to find ways to hate him. And it's it's difficult. It's really difficult. I think it should be Oprah Winfrey. I think <laughs> do we get enough votes? And Carol as her wife. If we get free cars <laughs> and stuff, Oprah. right? Everybody yeah, right. loves Oprah, right? Everybody does love Oprah. I really do like Oprah. Um, yeah. Well, in the last episode, Diana, and this one we we're like talking about the holidays, and this one's with history. So now we have coming up Thanksgiving, which is kind of the combo platter of holiday and history but i remember as like in the younger grades when you know you trace your hand and you make a little turkey and it was all so sweet it's like oh we learned how to like farm and break bread with the indigenous people and it's not to like later when you're like oh but then we also killed most of these people took their land and then coughed on the others to just like totally claim it and years later a few got a casino and i'm like huh, this isn't such a happy holiday. So what do we think about Thanksgiving? You know, should we celebrate just, you know, family and friends and that aspect of it? Should there be a side of remembrance as well nationally? Because, you know, even really the White House, what do they do? Pardon turkeys, all right. I mean, but it's really nothing to do about, you know, the essence or making good on what kind of we did. I mean, you know, the turkey, really, not the people. Um, I don't know. I, to me, it's just the oddest holiday ever, just because of the conflicting messages and feelings and so forth, you know, like Day of Remembrance, overeating. I don't know. Diana, what did it say you? It's hard because I do enjoy Thanksgiving, but then, you know, when you think of the history, the true history, history behind it not what we were taught as little kids putting on our thanksgiving pageant in front of the class like it's dark it's dark as all hell um i i do support the idea of some sort of a remembrance but i think if thanksgiving as a whole was wiped off the calendar i would be a little bit upset about that because i do love the focus on the family and being thankful for what you have um, so I think if we could keep those values maybe and offer up remembrance because, you know, in a way we can be grateful to those indigenous people, you know, even though we totally mistreated them, like we are on their lands and it's something we should acknowledge more often than not. They do do that here a lot in California, which is really nice to learn about. Um, so we can offer them some thanks, maybe look at the holiday that way, but it is just a nice time to be around people you love and like now that I've moved away from my family I don't go home for Thanksgiving um so it's nice that I spend it with like my family out here and my little nieces and nephews out here and and it's just that part of it's really great and you know we shouldn't ignore the dark side of it but we should I mean I know you can never make good on that but we can do what we can to try and make it better and show remorse and show thanks and Bettina, what do you think about Turkey Day, Thanksgiving? Do you celebrate it? Do you do much or not really? Well, I do like the idea of giving thanks for everything you have. But the thing is, I'm vegan. I have a big problem with people celebrating eating animals. It's a big problem. I get very unhappy about it. There's like a big thing about, oh, let's eat this turkey. You know, turkey's like an animal, like a doggy. Or, yeah. You know, so that I find very disturbing. We are having our own vegan Thanksgiving this year and we're inviting a bunch of friends up and we're doing eggplant and pasta and we're not killing any animals and our little puppy's going to be running around and so are our two cats, you know. So the whole thing about there being a whole holiday just really about killing an animal really makes me kind of upset. That's the part that's upsetting for me, like that part. And of course... The Native Americans, I mean, that's a whole 
can of worms right there that's kind of very sad as well. But if we focus on giving thanks and being with our loved ones, I think that's the way to go. What about you, David? Pro Thanksgiving in the middle. What do you think of it? Um, well, I I have a big family and holidays are huge for us. Um, as you guys saw on our messenger, uh, my family does a big, huge haunt every year that we've put, we've put on for 20 years. And uh, we had almost 1,700 people this year that came to the haunt. So the day after Thanksgiving, we have, I mean, the, the day after Halloween, we have a tradition when we're breaking it down that we start playing Christmas music. And most people get irritated with us. We get irritated when I see Christmas stuff at Home Depot you know, two months before Halloween. And I'm like, wait, that's, that's sacrilegious. You can't do that. You know? And we, we call each other out if you're singing a Christmas song before, you know, Halloween, but the, the day after for us, it's about family. It's about bringing it back. Uh, family for me, I I'm, I'm, I'm part Choctaw Indian and my, my granddaughter is Lakota Indian. My, my son-in-law, well, ex-son-in-law now, um, he's Lakota from the reservation. Um, we've had a lot of history in our family with the native Americans and it, when I was real little, you know, I didn't know any better and I was learning and I'll never forget a day that I was in a, a grocery shopping line and I seen, um, the back of a shirt of this lady, a native American she was wearing and it had like Geronimo and, and sitting bull. And, um, uh, there's a couple others that were on there and it said, our heroes, your enemies. And I remember, I think it was my grandma or my aunt. I looked at them. I was like, wow, are they're here? Th those are enemies to us. I said, Th those are like, the, like native American. And then the lady, I said, I want a shirt like that. I thought it'd be cool. And then the lady goes, you don't want this. And she turned around and it had George Washington and it had our forefathers on it. On the front, it says your heroes, our enemies. And even father Sarah for the Catholic church. Um, and I remember I was just in shock, like, the heck what does that mean you know i mean what am i where, where did i come from i'm viking irish american indian a little bit of german i'm a mutt you know but being able to see my 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 granddaughter go through her first powwow and uh, my my um son-in-law hearing his side of the story he's an extremist on every show when we first met him he was complete left and all of a sudden he turned right he's a conspiracy theorist like there's no tomorrow um but when it came to the history of the native americans um it went both ways and, and i i read uh, a book on um you know, Native Americans before we even got here, or, or you know, I guess I can't say we, <laughs> before it became America. And someone, a, a chief had said that, you know, if, if the, if we, if the Americans didn't take us, we, we were taking each other for, before that. You know, it's always been about war, you know, who's got territory. You know, I've always felt bad for the Native Americans. And then I hear the other side from their point of view. And sometimes they're like, oh yeah, we were taking people before that. But the winners always write history, right? You know, and so we've been taught in school, you know, since we're little. When we, I remember that, like you were saying, we the 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 folded up paper bags, you wrinkle it, wrinkle it, wrinkle it. That's your leather, you know, or you know your your Indian outfit. We never thought about it like that growing up, you know. And when it comes to the history of Thanksgiving, I think it's completely skewed. I think for us, it's family, it's football, it's it's a time to get together. We have a tradition in our family that. You know, it started when we were just a small family. Now we've got like 50 people in the family with all the grandkids. You know, it's, you know, it's like, you know, my brothers and sisters are mating like Catholic rabbits, man. It's crazy. So it, you, we, we do every day or everybody in the, in the family does, uh, they thank somebody or think there's something that happened in the family, what they're thankful for that year. And we go all around the entire room until we're done before we eat, you know? And um, so for me, that's, that kicks off the uh, holiday season. It kicks it off for us as a family. Um, it, we're big on Christmas, you know, um, you know, whatever it is, I just love it. That's for me. When people ask me what's my favorite holidays, I call it the holiday season. You know, and so that's why Christmas music's on November 1st all the way through. And I don't care who gets annoyed by it. I'm just going to keep playing it. <laughs> Good. I like it. I don't like the T-shirt. Like, our enemies, you know, your heroes. Just shows yeah. with history repeating itself and, you know, everything that day of remembrance. People suck, really, is the short of it. So, like, Diana, hang out with people who don't suck on Thanksgiving. Hang out with the nice ones. You know, that's what I say. Now, to right. Tina. Right. She's going vegan, um, you know, like half the week or so just for dietary reasons and other things. I might, you know, do vegan or vegetarian or what have you, but I still will eat, 
you know, other products from fish to meat. Um, my point is, you know, the typical Thanksgiving food, like, you know, turkey, cranberries, pumpkin pie, I don't like any of them. I find like turkeys usually dry. I'd rather eat duck if I was going to choose a bird. You know, pumpkin pie isn't my favorite dessert by any means. Canned cranberries is disgusting. Regular yeah. cranberries are meh. So I'm like, I don't like a lot of the food choices. And I was a fat kid. So every day to me, it was Thanksgiving. I never quite got it. I think I got it. Pass it to me. I do like sweet potatoes, I must say. So those are kind of yummy. But let's see. You're we're going vegan, Bettina. Is there any favorite vegan food you have to eat? Well, when I go, I go to Whole Foods and they have these vegan cakes. That's what I like for desserts. <laughs> they make it like a vegan like cake that I can slice up and give everyone, and it's so delicious. Like carrot cake is one of my favorite, or vanilla cake. You know, that's like a weird thing to say, I guess, but that's what I like in terms of favorite things to eat. Like for a splurge, you know, to have the cake. We had that on my birthday a couple of years ago. I love carrot cake. What about you, Diana? Anything you'd like to eat on Thanksgiving or do you go traditional? I'm vegetarian, um, oh. but I eat side dishes. Like it's nobody's business. Like stick my face in potatoes, um, <laughs> cornbread. Like we love a carb. Um, it has to be the natural cranberries. Cause like the king cranberry, you're eating a shape. Like you're literally just eating the shape of a cat. Like, oh my God, it's so repulsive. My mom loves it. And I'm like, you're eating a cylinder. I don't get it. No. Um, it pops out in one solid thing. It's so nasty. It's so nasty. Um, <laughs> my cousin, one time we went to Thanksgiving um, at their family before I moved out here and like we were all Italian and she did a, um, so we have like 87 courses. And for one of them, it was a butternut squash ravioli with some sort I don't remember what the sauce was but it was very complimentary to it and I was like this is bomb you know like when I host Thanksgiving one day we're doing butternut squash ravioli like miss me with your turkey I was even before I went vegetarian I was with you Sean like I did not like turkey I thought it was dry I felt sleepy immediately after which kind of like then knowing that the tryptophan gets in my head then I started feeling like sick it was like a placebo effect like did not like it wanted no part of it and David, with all your big family, where do you eat for Thanksgiving? Oh, man, what do we not eat? Everything <laughs> that both Bettina and Diana said, I, I love it all, you know. Uh, you know what? I think the cranberry sauce, I liked it when I was a kid because I, I was like a bottomless pit, and it was always plenty of that to eat. So I thought, that's my favorite. Um, reality is, I like all that food. Um you know, and, but I'm still a carnivore. I know it probably pisses everybody off, but I, I, I love meat. And at the end of the day, all that food is what my food eats. And then at the end of that, I'm just like, I'm stuffed. And then I don't, I mean, I got to go back to intermittent fasting. You know, it's, it's funny story. I, I tried to be, I tried to go vegan about 20 years ago when I got out of the military. I did it for four months, just, you know, thought maybe I'll get away from meat. And then I had some meat and I threw it all up and I realized there's something wrong here. You know, I didn't, I, I, I my body, you know, was, was like, didn't like it, but then I found I, I can go and eat a ton of meat and then eat vegetables and the same thing will happen, you know? So I just try to keep it, you know, whatever is available. I like gardening. I love all my, I like every kind of food except brown bread and fruitcake. I don't know about you guys, but anybody brings fruitcake. Oh, that stuff is you know, that was made by the devil. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know why people touch that stuff, you know, but other than that, I like, I like it all. I love the yams, you know, um, pumpkin pie is my favorite. You know, I don't know why nobody likes pumpkin pie, but I love pumpkin pie. I do these rolls every year though, that my whole family, I mean, I call it the famous rolls, but to be honest with you, I just give them out of a frozen package and heat them up and throw some honey on there. And everybody thinks they're famous from that. But you know, the reality is they're, they're easy to make and, you know, I keep telling all the kids because I got to get up to 15 rolls, loaves now just to feed the family. And and I'm trying to keep teach some of the kids how to do it, but they're all excited for about five minutes and then eh, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it all. All right. You're right, though, turkey does get dry, though. Yeah, a lot of people do not know how to cook turkey. Very we've rarely. We've tried it roasted. We've tried it in the oven. We've we we did it, you know, country style out in, in the grease pit. Right. You know, um, for me, I'll have that's the only time of the year I really have turkey. I love ham. You know, give me some ham, but you know, it, I don't know. Turkey's dry, boring. 
<laughs> Overrated. There we go. That's a conclusion we can all agree on. And then I would just like to say, everybody, like we're starting the holiday season, continuing from Halloween into Thanksgiving. And, you know, thankful for the FNL talk show audience and thankful for meeting you, David. And th thank you, Diana. And thank you, Bettina. Thank you for being in the same home as me, Bettina. Very <laughs> grateful that we now live together as well as one happy FNL family. And <laughs> You all would like to share your thanks for before we go on our pre-Thanksgiving show. We still have another week after this, so I just won't be available. I would like to know if the, our last show ever aired. I never saw it. Well, we'll be thankful if we see it. So <laughs> there we go. If it ever shows, if anyone ever watches us, we'll be thankful. You <laughs> even have to think family. His people suffered. He served in the military, you know, from Native American. He covered everything. He's trying to teach kids. I mean, send this man your check. What is going on? So, <laughs> I'd like to know how we I'd like people. to know how he spells Nazi. Oh, well, this was a whole big debate about a show I saw. And so anyhow, some people online had a T. Bettina was like, I'm an idiot because I put the T. So supposedly it's just a Z. So we don't want to encourage any Nazi. David would know. How does he spell Nazi? N-A-Z-I. Yeah. There we go. All right. David, I'm glad you said that because my mom bought me a book. I don't usually do a lot of reading, you know, but I, I will read if I can. You know, I'd rather do the book, you know, in college, it was books on tape for me. But my mom bought me a book about the Nazi concentration camps in the in the fall of the of, of, of everything. And I thought it was a, a great book. The cover sucked, though, because it was a big swastika. And my dumb ass brought it to school thinking, oh, I'm going to read this during my lunch break. And all of a sudden, kids come up and like, what the hell? And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that that cover. You know, I was like, nah, that probably doesn't look good right now. <laughs> you know? But no, it's N-A-Z-I, you know, and those people are, are evil. Nothing for the Nazi. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Hey, I'm thankful that I got to meet everybody. I'm thankful that, that I've finally been able to have enough time to come on here. I'm thankful that you guys let me talk with my BS and my rhetoric and, and you know, that we all can, like, just still be friends. And I think that's great. I think it's a that's the way the world to me should be, you know, and I love it. Awesome. Let's all agree. Like, even if we have disagreements to like, you know, love each other. I mean, why not? You know, that's right. like, yes, you know, lead with love, lead with thanks, gratitude. And, you know, till the next time, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.